Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Candid Coffee. I'm Doug. I'm Phil. And today we have a Costa Rican coffee uh, from Central Valley, Costa Rica. This is our Perla Negra, Las Lajas Perla Negra. One of our favorites. Oh yeah, man. You know, so this was this what we had this last year too, and it did really well. Uh, it was what was it? Coffee Review, one of their top thirty. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. top thirty of the year. Humble brag. Cool. Yeah, I had nothing to do with it, but uh, one of the top thirty coffees of the year, 2016, which is pretty cool. Comes to us from Oscar and Francisca Chacon. Uh, tell us about those guys, Phil. Yeah, they're producers in Central Valley, Costa Rica. Um, and Costa Rica overall has become very well known for producing really great honeys and naturals. Uh, part of that's due to, I think I mentioned this in the Sonora video, but if you didn't watch that one, um, part of that is due to the um, fact that they have really strict environmental regulation. And amongst Costa Rican producers, um, Las Lajas is um, definitely one of the best. Um, I think anyone would tell you that in Costa Rica. They're one of the first producers that I was aware of doing what's now very popular, um, like the red and the white and the yellow and black honey. And they've taken that now to natural, so that the term Perla Negra is a term they use. Um, so they have in naturals, and generally speaking, they have Perla Negra and Almond Negra. And Perla Negra is um, dried in uh, more of a depth on the drying beds. The cherries are, are, are not as um, shallow on the beds and they're turned, they're still turned a lot more often than the almond negra, which is um, a thinner layer of cherries. And so they also, um, because it's a thicker layer in Perla Negra, they dry for a longer time um, and they're um, in the fruit for a longer time. Perla Negra I like because it's just like super fruity. It's, uh, it's one of the the fruitiest coffees I think we get, and uh, um, very full-bodied, and always has like kind of a. They just like toe that line of boozy, but not over-fermented, where you're where you're starting to pick up like it's kind of tastes like a cherry cordial or a liqueur yeah, or something, exactly. but it's not like um, fermenty. And they also just pay so much attention to this process that um, a lot of times naturals to, to even toe that line when they're hot. Uh, cool down and they tend to be really earthy and like kind of nasty. Yeah, it's um, like overripe. And this one is super <laughs> clean as it cools. It's uh, yeah, there's no. That, I don't think there's any coffee like it really. That there's the, that boozy and fruity and then cools and it's super clean. Yeah, it's it's super unique. We should taste it. Though, yeah, we absolutely practice. should. Yeah, I'm like my mouth is like watering here for it. And though because it is from Costa Rica, these aren't you know Ethiopian varieties. It's not as uh, it's not as like tropical or citric of a fruit. It's like a developed, almost jammy style fruit, mm. you know, like, yeah, like plummy. And in one of our shops uh, in South Denver, we had this and actually an Ethiopia, the Kore, so go watch that video, our natural Ethiopian. I was like, well, should we feature two natural coffees? But they're so different, yeah. you know, like the, the Ethiopian has its thing going on, and this is just, it almost tasted like, on the Alpha Da Vinci, it almost tasted like a, a ch like a chocolate brownie with like, like all those like cherries and, and fruits and, and things yeah. in it, so. It de I mean, that would be probably one of the ways I'd say it's different than like a natural Ethiopian is it has more of that sugar brownie sweetness. Definitely, you kind of yeah. That, like the cocoa, like a natural Ethiopian, like a Kore, you don't really get any of that full sugar brownie, chocolatey kind of sweetness. Mm -hmm. And this one, underneath all that fruit, you have a lot of it. Yeah, like so. That's a great analogy for that. And yeah. it's cool how they, you know, I, I love how they, produced this consistently. I mean, we bought this last year. Um, I was there this year and cupped through the different, I, I had cupped them all last year as well, the different processes they do. And they were just like super on point. We generally buy lots and the term micro lot kind of comes, in specialty coffee kind of comes from the idea that you're searching for a particular lot to buy um, partly chance, partly attention to detail um, is the best lot and, the, and or the lot you prefer. These guys um, don't do that, so you don't go and cup like multiple Perla Negra lots, which is a little scary for someone like myself that's, I mean, we really emphasize to producers like, we need day lots, we need to cup individual sections of your production, um, and you know, in the back end we'll support and try and figure out why that was good and see how much more, but really this is the end goal of that. The end goal is not to forever cup day lots and, um, for producers and 
discard the rest. The end goal would be to, you know, produce consistently good coffee that has multiple flavor profiles, whether that is from one part of the farm or one varietal, another varietal, and you can go to a producer that's good and say, um, hey, I really like that Bourbon honey last year. I'd like to get that again. And ideally, it's as good. That's very, very, very rare. I have two producers in mind that do that, um, and this is one of them. So these guys are a lot more like wine producers or vintners, uh, where, you know, whether it's the, the this year's vintage or the next year, or like whenever you get it, you know it's gonna be awesome. This is awesome. You should go out and get it. Uh, it's in our shops right now, you can get it online. If you like this video, please drop a like or a comment or a question down below, we'll get to those. Uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and hit the little notification button so you can get these new videos when they come out because uh, we're doing them all the time now. And uh, yeah, you, you have to go try this coffee. It's super unique. Um, thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks. Oh man, we should have told people to follow Las Las. They're on Instagram. Oh, follow Las Las on Instagram. Good, that's perfect. All right.